lot of the really interesting use cases that we hear for voice transcription actually are where it's very, very sensitive information. In fact, information, we've even heard people say, can it be in an air-gapped environment? Because I want to have all of this privately, perhaps to read very sensitive information, uh, government point of view, healthcare, financial records, where you don't even want it to leave the system. What we believe that this recipe starts to lay out is a really nice way to start to do work like that. Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. We've got an awesome topic. We're gonna to be going through an end-to-end -end demo scenario. We're gonna be looking at what you see behind me, which is something we found on the Internet Archive. It's someone had gone out and gathered around 55, 56 of the greatest speeches of the 20th century. These are all voice files. And again, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a quick shout out to the person who did this great work, Colin Cam. Again, the beauty of open source here. He published this out you know, 15 years ago, and here it's a resource that we can go draw on today. What we've done is we've, we've actually collated all of these files. We've created a set of sample files that you can automatically pull into LLMware. We've integrated in a Whisper CPP engine so we can do real-time, high-quality, accurate, local, fast voice transcription. We're gonna do a variety of different parsing and text processing, and then we're gonna run some extraction models against it to start looking for sort of some of those needles in a haystack without us having to do any of the work of actually listening to these 50 files. This is the background, and we'd encourage you, go check out you know, Internet Archive, and then we're gonna we're gonna flip over to the code. All the code is available in the LLMware repository, so you can follow along and run this experiment on your own. All right, so let me click over. What you see behind me, this is the code. It's a pretty simple set of script that we're gonna run through, and I'm gonna talk through the scenario in walking through the code itself. We're gonna do a bunch of different imports. The one that's probably the most interesting is this setup function that's gonna pull down from a non-restricted, you know, an open access S3 bucket in which we've packaged a whole set of voice files. So first step is we're gonna download those voice sample files. There's the greatest speeches that we just looked at. There's a set of, of kind of fun, fast, famous quotes, a lot from you know American movies. There's a set of YouTube demos. So if you're tired of listening to all these demos and you wanna start pulling some of them down and just do voice to text, we've included three of our demos. And then we've also pulled down some raw earnings calls. We've done a lot of videos looking at text from earnings calls. So we actually went out, we found a few raw source files of you know hour long earnings calls. So you can really very quickly test you know, the Whisper CPP capabilities that we've integrated into LLMware using some of those longer and more complex earnings calls themselves. You pull down the sample files, that's going to download and cache all of those files on your system. Each of these four can then be used as separate examples. So the way we're going to do it, we're actually just going to take a look at the greatest speeches. And what we're going to do with those 56 speech files, once we've pulled them down, is we're going to parse them. And what the parsing step is going to do, it's going to run Whisper CPP. So it's gonna convert those wave voice files into text. It's gonna apply the chunking rules, the text chunking that we've set. And then there are a bunch of other parameters that we've set here that again, we'll walk through and explain as we go through the example. But we are gonna remove things like segment markers that are very, very useful if you're doing analysis of a lot of conversation turns. But for us, where we really just wanna look at the core text, sometimes those can actually be difficult to interpret. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull out the segment markers. We are gonna chunk by segment. Ultimately, we wanna look and aggregate different segments of text to form some of our text chunks. And then for this case, I've actually turned off um, the real-time progress, but when you run this, I would encourage you the first time, turn on that real-time progress. It's really cool to see the voice transcription happening in real time. Once we've parsed those 56 files, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just look at it on the screen, the dictionary entries that we've created. And, and for this example, we're doing all of that in memory. So we're parsing all of these, we're creating a whole bunch of text chunks out of it. And then there's a whole bunch of querying methods that we could use. We're gonna use just a very simple thing. You know, famous speeches by a lot of different figures. We wanna look and see in which of these text chunks that we've just been able to transcribe, does it mention president? Because we're kind of interested to do some research on you know, famous statements or famous quotes from some different American presidents in this case. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go run this filter, just a quick text filter in line that's gonna say, these are all the text chunks that I found that have the word president in it that we've been able to transcribe from voice. Once we've done that, then we're actually gonna get into the real interesting work that we wanna do. We're gonna go result by result by result, and we're gonna run an LLM against it. And then what we're gonna do in each of these text chunks is say, did you find the name of a president? Not just the word president, I mean, that's, that's nice, that's a good starting point, 
But did you actually find the name of a specific president in this passage? If you did not find it, then we're just going to skip it because we're actually looking for a few very specific, in this case, American presidents, Kennedy, Carter, Nixon, Reagan, Clinton, and Obama. But we only want to look in passages where president was found. So we're going to run through this extraction process. And then at the very end of this work, what we're going to get, the needle in a haystack here is we're going to go through these 56 speeches. We're going to find all of the places in which specific president name was referenced. One of the presidents that we were looking for was found. And then for that, we're actually going to print out to the screen then the source dialogue transcript, the actual coordinates, the timestamp of where that segment appeared in that particular transcript, and then the actual text itself. So hopefully that's pretty clear. Um, again, we thought this was a pretty good representative pattern of the kinds of sort of complex work that oftentimes comes up with voice transcripts. And a pretty cool thing here is all of this is going to be run locally. Everything that you're going to see from the voice transcription to the LLM extraction, the querying, all of it is actually going to be happening running locally. So let me go ahead and let me run the example. And while we're running, keep talking. Now, first thing it's going to do is it's pulling down all of those files. It is loading locally the Whisper CPP engine. This is running on a Mac with an M1. What I found is that you can transcribe the 56 files with a base model with pretty good accuracy. It takes around two and a half to two minutes and 40 seconds. I found it's a little slower on Windows. Certainly if you're running this on a CUDA environment, and we, and we do support Linux CUDA out of the box, if you're running on that environment, it, it'll fly through this. It'll be done in you know probably 15 or 20 seconds. As I mentioned, we turned off the real-time progress display. If you turn that on in that configuration setting when you run this, you'll see a long stream of all the text that's getting converted from voice into text. As I said, it takes about two and a half minutes, so it's pretty fast. You know, in the course of just showing this to you, we'll probably do a little bit of flash ahead. But as you can see, we're clicking through each of these famous speeches in a few seconds. For those who are students of American history, most of these are, it looks like, American speeches, and they are all in English. I mean, you can see their inaugural speeches, their concession speeches, their convention speeches, they're from presidential debates. You know, there's one, you know, farewell to baseball, an inaugural address, a first radio address from a prime minister, several of these dealing, you know, with major events and important things that happened throughout the 20th century, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Several of these deal with you know, the Vietnam War. There was an address to the nation, a resignation speech. So hopefully it gives you a sense for the kind Kind of material that we're looking through. And again, we're clicking through it and um, the model is converting it, all of it into text. And then all of that text is being indexed and converted into text chunks so that we can do some further analysis from it. So I'll pause here and we should be done in just a few seconds. And then once we're done with this, you're going to see it's going to, the screen is going to very, very quickly fill up with all of the text chunks that we've been able to create from these files. All right, so the screen has filled up. So let's let's go back all the way up to the top of what we've got here. This this is the output. So we successfully ran the speech to text and the parsing across these 56 wave files. And this is what it's produced. So it's created a block with the extracted text and all of the associated metadata. So it's been indexed, document ID, block ID, which is just a sequence of text chunks for that specific document, metadata, the content type, the file type. But what's really cool, um, before we get to the really, the really fun stuff, which is the text itself, is all the coordinate data that's been automatically extracted and added into this description of the text block. Usually when we use these coordinates, it's actually spatial coordinates of where information was on a particular page that was parsed. Here, these are actually time coordinates. So the way to read this is between zero seconds and 87 seconds. That's actually what text this corresponds to. And then from the actual segments that were actually produced from the voice transcription, it was from segment zero to segment five. And again, obviously the cool part that you wanna see, we've got the file source here, is the text. And so what you can see, the text came out pretty nice, pretty nice looking English here and across all of these various speeches. So all of this has been transcribed for us. So we don't have to go and actually listen to all of this audio. And you'll see this produced, all those 56 speeches were broken down 
into 353 blocks, individual text chunks. The text chunks were determined by respecting the segment, so we didn't break an individual segment, but then it was defined ultimately by the text chunk parameters that we set. So it batched up you know, little snippets of text until it got into the text chunk window that we had prescribed. And that's ultimately what dictated then the time coordinates associated with it. Sometimes it was slow, somebody was talking really slow, sometimes it was faster, somebody was talking faster. So we have our 353 text chunks. And as I said, we're looking for some specific information about presidents. So we ran a query then out of these 353 indexed blocks, just looking for president. And what we found were these 27 individual references at different parts of those speeches in which a president was mentioned. Now, it doesn't say which president, which country's president, the name of a president, was it a passing reference to a president, or was it actually something talking concretely about a specific president? And so that's where the real fun comes in, which is let's actually run a model now. Let's run a model over each of these 27 text blocks and first ask it a basic question. Is a specific president's name mentioned in this text block? And if it's not, then we're going to skip it. If it does mention a specific president's name, then we actually want to compare it with this list that we have to say, hey, are you talking about one of the recent U.S. presidents that we're actually interested to identify here? What we've done then is it iterates in loops. So we made 27 different LLM calls, a local running slim extract model. And what's really cool is it did a pretty nice job of it came back with an empty result of I didn't find a president name here. And so you can look at the text. One of the things I find always like really annoying when, when a model goes astray is you say, you know, what's the president name? And it's something like president of the United States or Mr. Vice President or Mr. Speaker or Senate or House of Representatives where it clearly is not getting that that is not what I'm looking for of the name of a president. So in fact, there is no name, no named president in this first text. So it did the right thing. It just skipped over it. In the second passage, it did find the name of a president, found the name Kennedy. So we're actually marking down this text. And what we can see then is there, it actually mentioned President Kennedy. And so it's identified and pulled out some of the key metadata that we were looking for, the file source and the timestamp. The next passage actually found Nixon, and again, another U.S. president. You can see as we scroll through, there we go. It does, in fact, mention Nixon. And then a whole bunch of these, it just skipped through because it didn't find a president name. It found other names. It found other proper nouns. But the model did a really nice job of not getting confused and coming back and saying, whatever it is you're looking for, it's not here in these passages. So you can safely skip over all of them. Then it found Jimmy Carter. And there we go. Uh, Jimmy Carter <laughs> mentioned right up front, you know, almost the very beginning of this speech from the Democratic Convention acceptance speech. And then it found Reagan. Again, you see Reagan here right at the beginning of that statement. Again, skipped over several others where it did not find the specific name, found Reagan again. And then finally, at the end of all of this work, from reading and transcribing, automatically converting into text, 56 speeches, putting it all into text blocks, you know, 350 plus text blocks, identifying the 27 search results that mentioned a president, running a model through all 27 of those and saying only if you find a president name and then only if that president name that you found is one of these presidents of interest. What we're able to find then filtering through all of that automatically in just a few minutes was something pretty cool. The five results that we were looking for that mention a president name, the source, the actual timestamp, and the quote associated with it. Now, I did go back. I'd encourage you as, as your own exercise. You know, once you run this, you will have all those WAV files. It actually does work. So the time start here, it will start at, after 326 seconds or said differently after you know, five minutes and 26 seconds. If you actually fast forward to your WAV player, it actually will start at this quote. So we've been able to index, find sources, do all of this in a fact-based way and do all of it automatically and running locally. Now, the last thing that I'll say is a lot of the really interesting use cases that we hear for voice transcription actually are where it's very, very sensitive information. And in fact, information, we've even heard people say, can it be in an air-gapped environment? Because I wanna have all of this privately, perhaps to read very sensitive information, uh, government point of view, healthcare, financial records, 
where you don't even want it to leave the system. What we believe that this recipe starts to lay out is a really nice way to start to do work like that, a framework of it, of doing pretty complex analysis, being able to do all of it in memory, and being able to do all of it in a local and potentially even in an air-gapped environment. So we hope you've enjoyed today's video. Go check out the example. You can find it in the LLM World Repository. As always, any questions, issues, you want to talk about this, you're excited about it, come join us on Discord. Thank you, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.